there's a bunch of different terms we use to describe shooting your video without a plan. Hosing down the room. Shoot anything that moves. Spray and pray. Spin and grin. Eh, just fix it in post. Turd polish. Really, turd polish. I'm not making it up. So how do you stop winging it and instead start producing it? How do you shoot for the edit? This video is about having a plan. Now, that's really an important point, so I'm gonna repeat it. Before you start shooting, you need to have a plan. You need to know what you're trying to accomplish. Most of the time when I'm out shooting, be it for work or for this channel, I don't have a crew. I'm here all on my own. And that means I need to know what I'm trying to accomplish, and that means I need to be organized. So I've always got a plan when I'm gonna shoot, even if it's only up in my head. To tell a story, the first thing I need to do is I need to go through and identify the scenes that'll help me make my point. Then I go through and I create a list of the shots I have to have in order for it all to make sense. Most of all, I come up with a plan before I ever hit the record button. Sure, serendipity might happen and you might have something really magical, but you can't necessarily count on that happening. To shoot for the edit, you need to make certain that you practice, that you've gone through and figured out what you need, most of all, you need a plan. Here's an easy way to understand the point. Always think of this as your viewer. Think about your camera as a person, your mom, your best friend, the smelly guy on the bus, Okay, maybe not him, but always be thinking about where can I put my camera so that my viewer immediately understands what it is I'm trying to share. Where can I place my camera so that they're going to understand my point? If you always think of your camera as a person, it's gonna help immensely to create stories that are compelling. To figure out where exactly to put your camera, ask yourself, where can I place it to capture attention? What's gonna give them insight into my story? Is the camera high? Is it low? Is it static? Is the camera moving? Is it wide? Is it close up? Moreover, what group of shots are gonna tell your story? How do they fit together? Your audience wants a series of things, one after another, to give them insight. They want a sequence. Your first shot should somehow set the stage. It can be a close up to provoke curiosity, or it can be a wide shot where we establish the location. Change the angle or focal length so your next shot focuses on the character or action. And then end the sequence with a payoff, as simple as exiting frame. Three shots, simple. Well, okay, maybe four. But a good storyteller knows how to concatenate a really complex idea down into a simple sequence to tell their story. For example, if you watch Matty Hapoya's channel, you'll see that he is the master of creating simple sequences. This is the practice of solid, basic filmmaking. It's a bit of a cloudy, rainy day. He starts his scenes either by entering frame. All right, so here's the thing. Or by crafting visual story sequences. These sequences are thought out, well-composed narratives that give context with the beginning, middle and end. It's like seven in the morning, which normally wouldn't be so bad, except with the time change, that means it's like four in the morning back home. His videos leverage the power of sequencing. They transport a viewer with images that carry meaning, set the right emotional tone. I believe this right here is our Iceland finale. It's a pretty good way to end it. Matty Apoya's videos are good, not Bahamas, just because he's mastered the art of storytelling at arm's length but it's because he knows what he's trying to accomplish before he hits the record button. I'm sure a lot of the content is off the cuff. It's gotta be ad-lib. But he takes each point and breaks it into its own scene with a beginning, a middle, and end. And each of those scenes fit together into a whole. And it's that structure that drives a viewer through his videos. 
When I first started doing YouTube, I created this video on the basics of sequencing. Looking at it now, the video is a bit painful. Okay, really painful. But the message is still relevant. Sequencing not only compresses time, it gets rid of all the distracting bits. You edit out those distracting bits so a viewer only sees what's important. You use the camera to show actions, reactions, or things that together tell a story. In real time, this footage from the sequencing video ran about 10 minutes. After editing, I told the same story in 30 seconds. Using close-ups, reaction shots, and action entering and exiting frame, the viewer feels like it's real time. That said, you may have noticed this simple sequence uses a lot of shots, 16 of them in 34 seconds. Okay, great, but what do you do with this information? Well, the way you become a better storyteller is to know the destination of your story before you start shooting your sequence. Ask yourself, what am I trying to accomplish? How does this fit in? But moreover, what's the emotional destination of this sequence and the emotional destination of my story? How do I want the audience to feel when we're done? This idea of setting an emotional destination for your story is pretty important and it needs to happen long before you start editing. Do you want your viewer to feel empowered? Do you want them to figure out how to master a new skill? Do you want them to laugh? Do you want them to be outraged? Whatever it is, it's going to inform all the choices you make during production. And it's not that hard to do. You don't have to know the entire story, although it does help. But understanding the destination means you're going to have a much better idea about how all the parts fit together. And frankly, it makes it a lot easier and more efficient. When allocating time for video shoot, I usually parse out about 20% of my time for an interview, the person talking, and 80% of my time for shooting cover footage. Too often I find that when folks think they've shot a video, all they're planning on is an interview, somebody talking. Well, a talking head is not video, that's radio. Video is intrinsically visual, which brings us back to sequencing. minutes ago I mentioned your basic three shot sequence. Well, okay, four. If you shoot them often enough, you'll find that they just become second nature to you. I rarely storyboard. Well, here, let me show you why. The problem with my storyboards is, well, they look more like a Rorschach test. You know, people see bunnies and butterflies rather than character enters frame and faces camera. So instead of storyboarding, I just keep a list in my head. I make certain I have at least a wide shot, a medium shot, and a close-up. I try to have my actions enter and exit frame. That makes it easier for editing. And like Maddie Hapoya, I want any sequence I create to have a point. No filler footage. Too often, a B-roll sequence is just a filmmaker showing off. What the viewer really wants is a compelling narrative. Viewers want to go on a journey, and they want that adventure, well, to make sense. If you think of your viewers as tourists, well then, you're the tour guide. Your job is to pick out the important things, not just random stuff that catches your eye. The hard part is figuring out what to include and what to ignore. I once had a writing professor in college who told me, you're never done until you've cut your favorite line in your story. You don't need it, it's overly clever, lose it, tell a better story. Years later, I realized the same is true with video production. You're never done until you've cut your favorite shot. You know, the one, the one that's 
really cool. Or I got up at 3 a.m., hiked up the side of a mountain to get that sunrise. So by God, that sunrise is going in my story whether it fits or not. Well, guess what? Your audience doesn't care. When your sunrise shot is confusing, they lose interest. If they lose interest more than once, they're gone. Removing excess shots, well, that's why they call it editing. You're cutting out the parts that detract or confuse. But you're only going to be successful if you have choices. Change up how you're shooting. Don't get stuck with all your footage being shot from the same basic angle. Change your camera height. Position the camera differently. This is called a Dutchman or a Dutch twist. Look for cool backgrounds. You're going to be able to make good decisions in what to keep and what to dump when you have a wide variety of shots. Shoot all the basic shots first, and then just try experimenting. You also might find it helpful, well, to write down a list of shots before you head out. That way, you don't forget anything. As I said earlier, I often have to work alone. But I don't mind it because it allows me to find some really interesting angles. But that also means I have to leave my gear in precarious places. And people walking by, well, they often think the gear is unattended. But you know what? I found most folks just ignore it. They pretty much just walk right on by. That doesn't mean you're going to be stupid and put it someplace where you can't keep an eye on it. You want it in eye line. But the good news is you no longer have to hold on to it with a death grip. Once you get over your fear of your gear growing legs, it frees you up. I was in Hawaii and I needed a shot of me on a scooter. It meant I had to climb up an embankment, walk out on an overpass, set up the camera, walk back down on the road, drive away, circle back, and ride under the overpass for the shot. Afterwards, I then had to climb back up the embankment and retrieve the camera. A lot of work for a three second shot, sure. But I needed the shot because it was an important part of the sequence and I never really worried about the camera. When you know what you're trying to say, you stay on point. And unlike this video where there were some times I did kind of blather on, don't tell talking heads, tell visual stories. Visual stories amplify your point. Talking heads, you run the risk of being a little boring. The old axiom of show, don't tell, is really important with video production. No matter what, shoot three times more cover footage, you know, B-roll, than you think you're ever gonna need. So that once you get here to editing, you only want to use the good stuff. If you only take one thing away from this video, it's, well, the thing I've said over and over and over again, and that's have a plan. Figure out what your emotional destination is going to be and figure out how you're going to shoot for the edit. How are you going to get the parts you need to be able to tell your story? Take this video, for example. In the last three weeks, I've been in 22 locations in four countries on two continents and an island. And the only way I could do it was, well, to write it all out ahead of time. Uh, now, you don't need anything this detailed. This is overly granular. And frankly, I ignored most of the words I wrote, but I kept the structure. It was the only way I could make certain all the parts would fit together. So make certain you have some sort of plan before you start your next video. It's going to make a world of difference. I hope this is helpful. Hopefully, maybe you learned some new things. If it was helpful, give it a like. Love it if you subscribe. But most of all, I love your comments. Feel free to drop me a line and let me know how you are planning things and how you are shooting for the, for the edit. And uh, most of all, get out there and just tell some great stories. I had to climb up an embankment, walk out on an overpass, set up the camera, walk back down on the road, drive away, circle back, and ride under the overpass for the shot. Here's an easy way to understand the point. Always think of this. Always think of this. Always think. <laughs> Another way to see a shot in a whole new way is to shoot upside down. Not you, the camera. Just turn your camera upside down, hold it about an inch off the ground, and you can track forward as people are walking and create a really dynamic shot. The best part is once you get into editing, just turn it 180 degrees so it looks right. I need to share a pet peeve of mine. It's when a shot is crooked. I mean, come on people, it only takes a second to check your horizon and make certain it's level. 
whenever I see a shot that's all out of whack, I find myself asking, who was this shooter? The staff photographer on the Titanic? Grabbing footage as the band slips into the sea? It's not that hard to look on the horizon, make certain it's square. The only time you'll see a pro with a crooked horizon is when they're doing it intentionally or they're about to get fired. 